Welcome to our Bible study series by HelpfulScripture.com. In this video, we review the 10 most relevant Bible verses about Scripture. If you want to study this topic more, then be sure to click the link below to our website. Our website, HelpfulScripture.com, has many more passages on this topic, and hundreds of additional topics. Also, if you want to share the Bible with others, then click the like button and share this video with your friends. Now let's get started. Passage number 1. The first verse on the subject of Scripture is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. It says, But you remain in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. From infancy, you have known the holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Every scripture is God-breathed and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that each person who belongs to God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Passage number 2. The second verse in our study of scripture is found in Psalm chapter 19, verses 7 through 13. It says, Yahweh's law is perfect, restoring the soul. Yahweh's covenant is sure, making wise the simple. Yahweh's precepts are right, rejoicing the heart. Yahweh's commandment is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. Yahweh's ordinances are true, and righteous altogether. They are more to be desired than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the extract of the honeycomb. Moreover your servant is warned by them. In keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Forgive me from hidden errors. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I will be upright. I will be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Passage number 3. For our third verse, we turn in our Bible to James chapter 1, verses 21 through 25. It reads, Therefore, putting away all filthiness and overflowing of wickedness, receive with humility the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not only hearers, deluding your own selves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his natural face in a mirror, for he sees himself, and goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of freedom and continues, not being a hearer who forgets but a doer of the work, this man will be blessed in what he does. Passage number 4. This is from Romans chapter 15, verse 4. The scripture says, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that through perseverance and through encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. Passage number 5. The fifth verse is from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 6 through 13. The Bible says, Seeing therefore it remains that some should enter into it, and they to whom the good news was preached before failed to enter in because of disobedience, he again defines a certain day, today, saying through David so long a time afterward, just as has been said, today if you will hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given him rest, he would not have spoken afterward of another day. There remains therefore a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For he who has entered into his rest has himself also rested from his works, as God did from his. Let's therefore give diligence to enter into that rest, lest anyone fall after the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and is able to discern the thoughts and intentions of the heart. There is no creature that is hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and laid open before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Congratulations. You've made it halfway through our study. So let's pause here for a moment. I want to remind you again that if you want to study this topic more, then be sure to visit the link in the description below. The link will take you to our website, helpfulscripture.com, where you can study more Bible verses on the subject of scripture and hundreds of other topics. Now let's continue our study on scripture. Passage number 6 is from Acts chapter 17, verses 10 through 11. It says, The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Beroea. When they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Now these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. Passage number 7. 
The seventh verse is found in Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. The Bible says, Blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand on the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in Yahweh's law. On his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by the streams of water, that produces its fruit in its season, whose leaf also does not wither. Whatever he does shall prosper. Passage number 8. The eighth verse on the subject of scripture is from Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 47. It reads, He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you, that all things which are written in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms concerning me must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds, that they might understand the scriptures. He said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Passage number 9. Our ninth verse is from Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 17. The passage states, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, and is rich to all who call on him. For, whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? How will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they didn't all listen to the glad news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Passage number 10. Our tenth and final verse on the subject of scripture is from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 36. It says, Having therefore, brothers, boldness to enter into the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by the way which he dedicated for us, a new and living way, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a great priest over God's house, let's draw near with a true heart in fullness of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and having our body washed with pure water, let's hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let's consider how to provoke one another to love and good works, not forsaking our own assembling together, as the custom of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment, and a fierceness of fire which will devour the adversaries. A man who disregards Moses' law dies without compassion on the word of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think he will be judged worthy of who has trodden underfoot the Son of God, and has counted the blood of the covenant with which he was sanctified an unholy thing, and has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. Again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But remember the former days, in which, after you were enlightened, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly, being exposed to both reproaches and oppressions, and partly, becoming partakers with those who were treated so. For you both had compassion on me in my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your possessions, knowing that you have for yourselves a better possession and an enduring one in the heavens. Therefore don't throw away your boldness, which has a great reward. For you need endurance so that, having done the will of God, you may receive the promise. This concludes our Bible study on the topic of Scripture. If you want to study this topic more, then click the link below to visit our website, where we have many more Bible verses related to Scripture, and hundreds of other Bible subjects. Also, remember to like the video and share it with your friends on social media, to help spread the gospel. Thanks again for listening and God bless.